I learned a long time ago to carry myself a certain way because I realized I was my own walking billboard. And um, because you don't know who's paying attention and who's not. So I pretty much was always the same. And, um, and it meant that I showed up on time. It meant that I was accountable. If I was running late, I tried to let somebody know. If there was some kind of something beyond my control, I, I, uh, whoever was in charge, I tried to let them know. Um, I did what I was supposed to do without getting into other people's business. I minded my own business. Um, I stayed on set. I never walked, never was one to venture off set and they go looking for makeup. Where's makeup? No. If I had to go 10 100, that first AD knew where I was going. I didn't give it to anybody to give a message to. I let the first AD, I let those in charge know that I was going. You know, um, if I just had to run off really quick because I couldn't, you know, the first AD was busy or something, the hairdresser knew where I was. Or the actor. I would go up to the actor and say, I'll be back in a couple of minutes, the hairdresser's got your part above. So somebody always knew where I was. I was always accountable to somebody. I never felt like I operated in a vacuum, you know. Um, and, and I did what I was supposed to do. And I did my homework. I did my research. I showed up prepared to work. I never was one to come into work to do my makeup. Um, I would come into work. If I had to be at work at 3 o'clock in the morning, and I got to get up at 1 o'clock. That's what I did. I got up and did my makeup. Um, I, I, and you know, at night before I go home, if the makeup trailer wasn't moving, I cleaned up my station. So when I came in next morning, I'd have to clean my station because I took the time to do it the night before. Um, you know, I give everybody in the makeup trail and everybody that I work with the respect that they do. And I expect that in return. So, you know, um, anybody who I was working with, we talked and we set up kind of ground rules before we started working so that we didn't overstep our, our boundaries with each other. Um, I mean, I liked you, but... I will give you the respect you deserve when I come in in the morning. I will speak. And I try not to act like you spent the night with me. And even if you did, the rest of the crew didn't have to know. So, and you know, um, I, I, I am a firm believer that I never felt I was better than anybody else. But in the same token, I was nobody's doormat either. I always carried my head high because I am somebody, I, you know. I don't need you to validate me to make me feel like home supposed, you know. I was quite com I'm quite comfortable in my own skin. I know who I am and I know what I'm capable of doing. I didn't have to fake what I was doing. I knew that when I got a job I performed to the best of my ability. I did what I was hired to do. And if I was challenged by it, I acknowledged my challenges. And if I couldn't do it, I'm sure enough not gonna put myself in a position to fail when I can't do it. So I'm not going to tell you I can do something that I can't do. You know, and, and, and I carry. I mean, that's a work ethic I learned. You know, I got immigrant mentality. I'm an immigrant. And um, and I came here keeping my eye on the end results and not on what I had to go through to, go, to get to get that result. And um, it's, it's, I've got stick-to-itiveness. And um, and I don't believe in quitting. I don't believe in giving up. And and I love a challenge. So so for me, it's 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 very important. But I did my homework. I always read. I had one experience when I first started in this industry, and I think that accounted for a, a, that accounts for a lot of my behavior. Now, I did one movie where I didn't feel I was prepared, and I vowed that will never happen to me again. And it's a movie that I was working on as a second, or, you know, and um, I didn't have details. So I went, I got on a plane and flew across from L.A. across the country to do a movie that I had never even seen a script. So I was not prepared. It's not like you can Google it when you're on the set because we didn't have Google. So I was completely unprepared. And I thought, that's not how we're supposed to work. And I will never work like this again. And that made me realize that this is a job to be taken seriously. This is, you can't win this. You got to read the script, break it down, understand who you're doing. So I always read my script at least three or four times 
before I even break it down so I understand what I'm doing, what my character is supposed to be doing, what kind of life my character is leading. Because that's going to determine what kind of makeup I do. So very, very important. Very, very important. And um, so there's a certain amount of integrity. I've worked with so many people who don't really read the script. They kind of skim through it. That's not what I do. I read the script in its entirety and I break it down as, in its entirety. I make my questions. I, you know, I, I give my character a life if they don't have one so that I understand what kind of socioeconomic background my characters come from. Uh, do they have any education? Do they have kids? Do they marry? What kind of work do they do? You know, I mean, lawyer by day, stripper by night. You know, something that gives me a little bit more insight as to because that de decides where I'm going to go with my character. And, and so I like the evolution of building that character and stuff. But you can't do it if you don't read the script because you don't know what you're doing. So, so I, you know, I've learned that along the way. And I think that that's one of the things that has kept giving me work is my ability to, to deliver and to understand and to work and, you know, get all my questions answered up front and, and, and not assuming that I know and then make drastic mistakes that can't be corrected. So, and I've been fortunate to have department headed so many movies and not only just department head, but also work as person, a personal. And, um, but again, I don't think I would have been called back if I didn't do my job properly. Because I realize it's a business. It's, it's, it's not just about the art, it's about the business. And, and that's what makes the difference. And, um, your art might get you the job, but your business sense is what keeps you the job. And um, so I learned that there's a process. You got to learn how to negotiate your deals. And, you know, you, you got to learn. You have to see it as a business. I think that that's one of the most important things, your ability to see it as a business. And um, I, I, I like the business end of this industry. And, and I think that that's probably one of the downfalls today. People don't realize that this is a business. And, you know, film, I think, is the highest level of this industry. Um, I think you might be able to, to fake your way through a lot of other stuff, but you can't fake your way into a film set. It's not going to last very long. Because there's just too many little entities and too many people you have to deal with to, to get that end result. It's such a huge collaborative effort that you have to interact with so many other people that you can't just wing it. There's no way to just wing it. You know, you have to prepare for it. And, and, um, and, and I think that, you know, film, film gives you that opportunity to really go in there and look at what you're doing and really develop it to its fullest. And I, and I love that about um, working in film.